My name is Professor Eric Fru. I'm a faculty member in the uh, Aerospace Engineering Sciences Department, but I'm also the faculty director of something called the Autonomous Systems Interdisciplinary Research Theme. So I'm going to spend a few minutes talking to you about this uh, theme, and then you'll hear from several of the uh, faculty on their more detailed work uh, in their lab. So uh, Autonomous Systems Interdisciplinary Research Theme, or IRT as we call it, I wanted to spend just a quick minute talking about the IRTs and explaining what they are. You got a little bit of a sense of that when we talked about Qubit, although that's a campus-wide initiative. So when uh, Bobby Braun took over as the dean a few years ago, he uh, put the college through an internal process of looking at uh, topics of high national need where CU Boulder had strength and identified six of these topic areas. You can see them listed here. And he um, invested some resources to help us further our communities and go after large project opportunities together and put a faculty director in charge of each of those areas. So I'm the faculty director of the Autonomous Systems Initiative. Uh, again, here are the six areas. The Quantum Integrated Sensing Systems Initiative has been rolled into that uh, Qubit initiative, which is now a campus-wide initiative. So I'm really here today to talk about uh, the royal me or we, so my colleagues in this theme, and I'll say a little bit more about that in just a minute. Uh, I've learned that we could spend hours arguing about what is autonomy and what's an autonomous system, so I'm just going to throw out my definition here and kind of move forward. Autonomy is essentially the ability of a system to perform complex ta uh, tasks with substantially reduced human intervention for extended periods of time, sometimes at remote distances, but as the the cartoon shows there is still always a user on the end. So I think of autonomy as sort of the glue between a machine and a user. And what goes in the middle can vary by a lot. So again, I don't want to over argue about what's autonomy itself, but there's sort of a machine and there's a person on either end of it. And that's the framing here. Uh, this is just one example of perhaps a firefighter using a drone to help scout out a wildfire. And you can think of the autonomy as some of the path planning and the adaptive decision making that's happening on this drone. Uh, so when we think about autonomous systems, uh, again, we think about this perspective, a user on one end, a machine on the other, we know how to certify the endpoints, right? We know how to apply uh, process-based certification, type certification to machines, right? Cars are deemed roadworthy, aircraft are deemed airworthy, and that is um, based on how they are built. Right? Some units are tested, subsystems sub are testing, software is testing, but you don't take every car on the road and put it through its paces and check out all the scenarios before you certify it and sell it. On the other end, we know how to certify people. Uh, we do what we're calling here performance-based certification. I have a 15-year-old daughter, so I am very aware of the certification process for driving. Right? We put the uh, young student into a class, they learn the rules of the road. Eventually, they're given a performance-based test, right? An instructor is sitting next to them, takes them on the road, gives them some case, cases to, to work through. Depending on how this student performs, they are assessed as being you know, certified or not. There's a lot of trust, a lot of assurances that go into that process. And so the real question is when you have autonomy kind of in the middle, how do we think about bringing those two concepts together? And things get really fun you know, in the middle there. And so that's really driving the uh, autonomous systems interdisciplinary research theme. And so we're really uh, interested in this sort of grand challenge question of how do you certify these types of autonomous systems to be released into the wild? And we're really focusing on looking at aspects that make them smart, safe, and secure. So when I talk to, or when I talk about academic work on autonomous systems, I think most academic work tries to fall into the smart category. You can go online and find all kinds of cool YouTube videos of drones and robotic systems doing fun, smart things. Some of my colleagues are starting to talk about safety as a really core property You know that can have guarantees in the system, in the solution, in what you're deploying, especially when you have learning involved and other types of non-deterministic behaviors in there. And not a lot of people are talking about security yet. And so at CU Boulder, as you're going to see later on, we have this really uh, unique opportunity to bring together strengths in the smart, the safe, and the secure to think about this problem of how to certify autonomous systems for release into the wild. Now, autonomy is not a widget. So again, uh, I don't want to talk very generically about autonomy. We're not organizing ourselves that way. So we're thinking about autonomy in the context of a few applications where we have some strengths. So the columns here indicate some of the application areas. I'm not going to read through the whole list there. And we're looking at applying our strengths in the sort of the disciplines, 
the rows and mapping them into the columns. And so a lot of the projects will be ground in some application. Uh, my personal research fits into the unmanned aircraft systems field robotics. We have strengths in other areas. We're also using this as an opportunity to grow into the advanced manufacturing industrial robotics space and of course connections to these other um, IRTs as well. So I just want to say a couple quick words about the smart, safe, and secure uh, topics. Uh, I'm not going to, again, read through all the slides here, but we do have a lot of expertise. One of the areas where uh, you, know, so you see the smart showing up a lot is in unmanned systems, robotics, and control. I've just listed a few of the, our strengths here and some of our faculty, and you're going to get to hear from three of them shortly, so I'm not going to dwell too much on this. So that unmanned systems, robotics, and control, I think of as you know, a, 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 an important part of that smart aspect here. And we do have some work on this topic and sort of the next one on that human-robot interaction. That's also a pretty key component. Under smart, we also have a lot of expertise in perception and sensor fusion. Uh, sometimes uh, it's easy to think that perception in this context is about robots, but that's not it. I'll show some example projects at the end. Autonomy applies to a lot of domains. We have a lot of expertise in space situation awareness, global positioning system, and, and other types of perception systems, not just you know robots and self-driving vehicles. So that's another strength that we draw on in this initiative. Uh, assured algorithms. This has been a, a fun uh, part of my role as the faculty director is to now look at how we can bring together new groups. So we have a, a strong uh, group that does um, programming languages verification and a formal methods group and bringing them in contact with our robotics folks, our unmanned systems folks, and looking at bringing these assured uh, assurance concepts into the domain of uh, unmanned systems. I also have a picture here of you know, air traffic control concepts. That's very much a strong part of safety in the context of autonomous systems. And then likewise, security, cyber-physical systems. Uh, we, you know, I'm not going to say too much about the, the technology, uh, cybersecurity, and policy program because you're going to see quite a few briefings about this uh, shortly. But this is a new growing area of strength here on campus, and I'm really excited to sort of fold that into this um, thinking on autonomous systems. So just a couple of quick highlights from our group. For, I guess I should have backed up and said two other things. We're in the second year of a four-year process for these IRTs. So I'm really showing some highlights here from the first year. It was on a slide. I didn't call it out. There are about 40 faculty who self-identify as doing research that is of interest to this topic area. And that includes the robotics faculty that you'll hear from later, but also experts in power networks, smart buildings, um, medical devices. So again, uh, we take a very broad view of what is autonomy in this initiative. Uh, this In year one, we had over $20 million of awarded grants in this topic of autonomy, over 28 projects, and you can just see some of the funding sources here, DARPA, DHS, DOE, et cetera. Um, one highlight that came directly out of our process was this DARPA subterranean challenge project. Uh, Sean Humbert out of mechanical engineering is leading a team. It was a, It's a $4.5 million three-year DARPA project. Uh, we're one of, I think, seven teams that was funded uh, for that effort. And, and that team came together through some of the workshops we had in this initiative. So it's a, a nice uh, success story to point to through this. Uh, a couple other um, uh, 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 slightly smaller scale projects that are mentioned here. I'll say a few more words about these. Uh, coming up. One of the larger kind of efforts that we're going after is this smart home uh, space habitat project leveraging our strengths in bioastronautics and connecting to some of our autonomy folks. Um, recently CUB came a partner with uh, Draper and their Draper Fellows and of the uh, um, um, initial class of Draper Fellows at CU Boulder, five out of nine of them are doing autonomy related research. And last thing just to note is there's an open faculty search right now in this topic kind of directly falling from this IRT. In fact, those six topic areas, there's a faculty search this, this year coupled to each one of those. It's part of the Dean's strategy for growing uh, in this particular area. So I just want to share a couple projects, again, to give you a sense of the breadth uh, of this initiative. I'm not really talking about the projects that my colleagues are doing because they'll talk about those in a few minutes, and I tried to pick a few that were of some relevance to this audience. Um, one project, and, and also, all of these projects um, have multiple collaborators on them. That's another important aspect of this initiative. Uh, success is not getting every one of those 40 faculty members one more single you know, investigator award. It's about big efforts with multiple colleagues working together. So here's an example project. Jay McMahon is a faculty member in aerospace. Chris Keplinger is in mechanical engineering. They're looking at using soft robotics to land on asteroids, dig up the material, actually eject it into space and orbiting collector grabs it and you can do in situ resource uh, um, uh, utilization with this type of process. So it's, it's combining uh, Professor McMahon's expertise in near, near object um, uh, navigation with Professor Keplinger's expertise in sort of soft robotic material and soft robots. 
on a totally different perspective, this is a project with Nassar Ahmed, who's in aerospace, and Daniel Zafer, who's in the information sciences department. They're looking at this idea of collaborative data analysis and data fusion for um, missile defense. So here we've got collaborative sensor fusion, distributed data fusion, combined with uh, data visualization, human factors expertise. So not only are they looking at algorithms for identifying you know, missile tracks and having an alert system, but developing the displays, I guess I'm holding a pointer, I can do this a little bit, you know, developing displays that the analysts will actually use and will help them understand the information uh, as it's emerging. So it's not just blinky lights, but it's you know, really looking at the human factors at a deep level. Um, not everything is directly connected to aerospace, so this is an example in power networks where our, our colleague Kyrie Baker in civil engineering is looking at uh, distributed optimization as a tool for safety and security and optimality in power networks. This is a, a neat project. It's a competition out of ARPA. She did get some funding out of ARPA to develop some uh, algorithms, and I think there's like $4 million in prizes if you uh, can do this. But the idea here is taking this very big system of uh, you know, 10,000 nodes and breaking this down and applying distributed optimization techniques to add efficiency and security into the power grids. That's an autonomous process. This is uh, you know fits within the, um, uh, the, the autonomy IRT. And then the last project to mention, this is Natasha Abbasanek, also out of aerospace with uh, Jay McMahon and Nassar Ahmed. Here, in short, they're looking at bringing some of the machine learning techniques that are being developed for self-driving cars and other domains into the spacecraft uh, um, uh, navigation um, uh, domain, and particularly when you've got chaotic multi-body systems and you want to have spacecraft maybe transiting between the different moons of Jupiter getting to Europa, doing a little bit of pre-learning of maneuvers because these are still very challenging problems to, uh, to optimize trajectories. So bringing some of these new autonomy tools into uh, a domain that you know can be sometimes slow to uh, incorporate uh, uh, technologies that are not verifiable, right? So the key in space is that really has to be certifiable. So that's, you know, really pushes on some of those aspects of our initiative. So um, that's just a, a background on this initiative, some of the example projects. Um, you can look us up at autonomy.colorado.edu and I'm happy to, to say more about this, um, you know, over the next break. So thank you for your time. <laughs>